site called Our Journey from We to Me. Ah. So Suge, just you know, a little bit of background, and you'll see more of this. So Suge is in South Carolina. I'm in Connecticut. Um, she's divorced. We're about the same age. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to bring perspective to people on, yeah, there's this huge, great world after divorce. You know, yes. as painful and, and difficult as it can be, it's yes. there's so many opportunities and the next chapter doesn't have to be yes. a bad thing and there's so yes. much positivity oh, and so goodness. we thought you know again fem so she's black i'm white um she's in north carolina uh, south carolina i'm in connecticut we have all these different perspectives right. but we both have kids our kids mm -hmm. are around the same age and so wow how, and and for me what I have found is um, I talk to a lot of guys who have gone through divorce mm -hmm. and I'm amazed that they don't know how to express what they're going through. Right. And I, 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 maybe it is a guy thing. I mm -hmm. mean, but I, I, so part of what I'm trying to do is and I've set up another website uh, and, and a podcast to help guys because That's awesome. it never, it never dawned on me that, you know, tough macho guys that bam now they're divorced and now they have to take care of their kids mm -hmm. right or they get their kids on the what are they they they, it, they it's like know. they don't know yep. and it's the basics right and for mm -hmm. me i was fortunate that um and, and the other thing that that i'm trying to teach guys is so my kids were um were much older in their 20s mm -hmm. when i got divorced mm -hmm. and my expectation was they've seen what our life has been like and they understand it. So when I tell, when we break the news that we're getting divorced, they're going to kind of be cool with it. Oh no. It, I think they take it the worst. They, I, I can't even tell you how it rocked my world yep. to see how my kids reacted to that. Mm -hmm. And so what I try to talk to people about is if you're contemplating divorce, if you're going through divorce and you have older kids and you think that, they get it no nope. yeah i say that they don't yeah i say that about myself because i stayed you know in my relationship my son was 19 when when i finally decided to leave my daughter was only seven but it did it it, it he he went into a state of depression you know um she yep. she's she's great you know i was able to get her counseling you know um She's, she's able to express her emotion. You know, I, I, I tell her how important that is, but my son, he just shuts down. He just shuts yep. down, you know, and he, I asked him, you know, I told him before, I said, you know what, Marquise, you really do need to go and get some kind of counseling because it's affecting you and, you know, many different ways. And I try to talk to my son as much as I can, but he's 24, you know, so he's a grown right. man. And yep. a lot of times grown men, they don't want to you know, a lot of it is pride and, and feeling like that they can get through it on their own. And, right. you know, I wasn't the best mother in that in that marriage or in, in, in his life, you know, because I didn't know a lot of the things until I came out of it and began my own healing journey. You know, right. so now I talk to him from that perspective, but I see how it affected him so very much more than it affected my daughter, you know, and it, it's a huge difference. It really and truly is. And I know a lot of people, you know, stay in these relationships thinking it's best for the kids, but it's not, it's, it's not. not, it, 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 it traumatized my son at the age of 19 and he went on a di downward spiral. He's finally, you know, coming out of that, but good. it's, it's, it's not, it's not, I think they take it the worst. They re yeah, and and you know, for me, so my younger son lives with me. My mm -hmm. older son though lives and lives and works in New York City. Okay. So, with COVID, he can't come home that often, and mm -hmm. we can't get in there to see them. So, I have the ability to work with my younger son. You know, mm -hmm. he gets to see right. what it's like. Older son, it's like you know, FaceTime, and and mm -hmm. it's you know, it, it's you don't have that same right interaction. And so, part of what I'm doing is. Um, and I want them to understand that, you know, we, we in my case, we, sep we we ended the marriage because we were two completely different people mm -hmm. and we were living two completely different lives. Right. And it, it there, there was no value, but it wasn't like, and I tell the boys all the time, I didn't hate their mom. Right. I just couldn't live with their mom anymore. So I try to do things for her and try to get her back into the fold where I can. So mm -hmm. bring some sense of, of consistency, right. if you will, but... 
Um, yeah, the, my older son is like, wow. And so when, when my ex gets sick or there's an issue, he's like, I got it, Dad. I, I, I'm, I'm the guy. I'll take care of it. And I just have to, like, back off and where I want to help. Mm -hmm. I just got to say, you know what? You're right. You're, right. you're 29. You can do this. Right. You know that I'm here if you need me, mm -hmm. but right. you guys step up and do what you got to do. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, it's not, it's not that we don't, uh, you know, for me personally, it was a growing apart. Like, and I believe that relationships to have a healthy and, and successful and thriving relationship, you absolutely have to be able to grow together. And if one person has a comfort mindset and they're fine in that place of pain, um, and you're growing, then you guys are going to grow apart. And that's what happened in my situation. It was like, I wanted to seek the healing from my past. I wanted to seek that, you know, because I saw that the childhood trauma was beginning to affect the relationship. And he was like, no, I'm not dealing with that. You know, like, I don't want to, I'm fine where I am. You know, this yep. is where I'm staying, you know, and I was fine with it, you know, and I just continued to grow. And then the more that I continued to grow, it was like, no, this is not, this is not where yep. I want to be. You know, I would, I would rather be on my own happy and single than in a relationship <laughs> where we're not growing together because right. we're, we're part of this universe. We're going to evolve. We have to evolve. And the more that you fight it, the more that you stay in this place of depression and pain and, and, you know, chaos, like nurturing negative mindsets. So, you have to, you have to, and, and that wasn't happening for us. And just like you said, you know, we were, we, we were two different people and it's better now. It's better this way yeah. now. You know, we, we talk, you know, we, we can, we can be cordial to each other and, you know, take care of our daughter like we're supposed to, but, you know, you stay in your place of pain and I'm growing out of pain, you know, I'm, I'm growing from that place. So, you know. You have to want more, you know. <laughs> so, taught, so for, your, for background, you're a confidence coach, correct? Yeah, so what I do is because I, you know, I realized that a lot of my pain and trauma and abuse caused uh, PTSD, caused me to, you know, deal with PTSD. So yep. what I'm doing, especially with men, because I see that a lot of men, you know, I think that more men experience uh, a lot more trauma and pain and abuse than women do in their when they're children. And so they too suffer from PTSD. And then a lot of them, like you said, they, they have these macho behaviors. Well, what do what does those macho behaviors cause? A lot of them end up in jail, which causes more PTSD because they're in this confined space. You know, they're constantly told what they have to do when to go to bed, you know, like it's, it's a lot of control in that area, a lot of mental and emotional abuse. Um, yep. A lot of men, you know, they, they shut down, you know, they, they are not, they're not able to express their emotions. They're, they're fearful, you know, they're fearful of not only women, they're fearful of the, a lot of times themselves, they can't trust themselves. So that's why they can't trust other people, you know? And so experiencing this life of PTSD and having my confidence broken as a child, I, the more that I began to heal, you know, and that's how I was able to forgive my children's father, you know, for our relationship. And it was just like, oh, my goodness, like a lot of men were broken down. Their confidence was broken before the age of 10. You know, a lot of wow. them were yep. told, you know, not to express their emotions. And like you were saying earlier, you know, you found that a lot of men, they get out of these marriages and then they don't even know how to deal with the emotions and the feelings that are coming up, you know, oh, right. Yeah. And a lot of them turn to alcohol or drugs, you know, because they don't properly know how to express that. And then again, a lot of them are very prideful when it comes to like seeking therapy or seeking assistance, you know, it's like, Oh, you know, I, I'm this macho man. I can handle this all on my own. I can do it all my, on my own, but we weren't here. We weren't placed here to do it on our own. There are people oh. out here that can assist you in getting through. And so I know now that my journey and what, everything that I went through was to help, you know, men to restore their confidence again so that they're not, you know, being mentally and emotionally abusive to, to women and children and physically yep. abusive. Cause I, I realized that a lot of domestic violence situations happen 
because these men don't know how to properly express their express. emotions. And so what do they do? They yell, they get angry, they, yep. they play these mind games, you know, they, they, they begin to, you know, abuse. So, you know, they don't know how to properly express that. So, you know, I was like, well, how can I, and, and really, it wasn't really me saying, how can I, you know, help? It was like, right. um, you know, the universe was like, this is how, this is how you're going <laughs> how to help. How are you going to do it? <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. This is how you're going to help. And so, um, you know, it, of course, it, there's challenges because, you know, you deal with men who, who, who don't trust women, you know, so why would they want to come to me? But, come you know, to you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I'm just being patient. I'm, I'm doing what I, what I, what the universe is directing me to do. And I know eventually, you know, they'll start, they'll start to gravitate. They'll start to gravitate because I've been there. I'm a woman who understands, like, I don't want to beat you up for what you've been through, but in the same token, I'm not going to allow you to beat me up either, you know? Right, um, right. But I can show you how to regain your confidence again, even while living with PTSD, because it's possible. And I am a living witness. Your example. Of that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So that's why I do it. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's awesome because I think, you know, I think culturally for so many years, guys were just taught to be the tough ones. Like you can't, mm -hmm. like guys shouldn't cry. Right. Like guys shouldn't break down. Right. And I tell the story that when I was contemplating divorce, I got to this point, this really dark place. Mm -hmm. And I said, I just got to, I just got to go away. Right. And I literally threw some stuff in my car and I drove and I live in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. I drove to Rhode Island and there's a beautiful beach called Watch Hill, like right mm -hmm. over the border. And I went to that beach and I just cried for like two days mm -hmm. on the beach. I don't, but it was like, freeing. it was like this freeing, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And, and I, talked to, I talked to grief coaches that, that say that's so critical. Like you, you have to grieve. Like you marriage, have to. You have it's to a death. grieve. Now, that's a death. Marriage is just like a death. When, when death. Force happens, it's like death. Yeah. So I, we were together 35 years wow. and, and we were married 31 years. So wow. it wasn't oh, like yeah, something. Oh, yeah, that's your life. Right? Your whole life. So I spent more time with this woman than I was, you know, I mean, she was the majority of my life. We, right. we got together, you know, early 20s, I guess. So, right. and, and and you sit there and you think about, you know, all that you went through, and I'm blessed that I have these two great kids, right? So yes, it's not like it was. So yeah, yeah. You, you, you mm -hmm. have to you have to take the good yes. that comes of it. But yes. if you aren't if you aren't able to grieve that out, yes. you can't heal. You yes. can't move on because mm -hmm. you have all this. And I and I, I tell people all the time that I was comfortable being like part of it was I was comfortable being miserable, miserable. because I knew that okay i'm miserable but i don't have to take a chance it is what it is but you get to that point where that where that comfort zone starts to crack yeah you're sick and tired of yeah, being sick and tired yeah and, and and so it cracks and then mm -hmm. you have and that's when you know you got to you, you have to make that change you have to go yes. and that's when and that's that weekend at the beach did mm -hmm. for me it was yes. just like okay yep because i wasn't sure i still like was on the fence like am i mm -hmm. doing the right thing and then when all those emotions came out it was mm -hmm. like clarity it was yeah. like okay i got it and 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 and, and, mm -hmm. and we moved on but i don't know that many guys can, can are willing to allow right. themselves to grieve right and then a lot and, of that and, too a lot of men they stay even though they know they don't want to stay you know they stay because it is, like you said, it's a lot of fear. You know, it's fear of the unknown. Well, yeah. you know, I have this person here, you know, and although I'm miserable in this situation, you know, cause my husband was stepping out on the marriage and it's just like, if when you're genuinely happy with someone, you don't need to go out and look for somebody else. If you're happy That's with right. that person. And, 